Taking the time to soak in the scenery and world-building elements strewn about within a virtual setting is one of my favorite pastimes. Luckily for me, the team at People Can Fly have constructed one of my favorite in-game atmospheres in recent years. Outriders has plenty of ingredients to make their new foray into the looter-shooter RPG genre one that deserves your time. Most likely. Outriders is dripping with that special sauce. But is it all flavor and no filling? My name is Wyatt Fawcett, and this is The First Bite. Polish studio People Can Fly didn't rush their take on the genre of shooter popularized by the Destiny franchise, and it shows in all the right places. There's a wash of visible polish, an intimate collection of story plot points, and some of the best gunplay in modern gaming. On the surface, the progress shown by People Can Fly with their initial offering leading up to Outriders may be the most transparent hero arc in this entire generation of video games. You can feel each and every influential source that makes up the DNA of this game, and almost no part of that is negative. Starting from the core of the product, the critical ingredient in this recipe is the shooting mechanics. And, People Can Fly have been honing their tactile combat design skills since before some of their now existing player base was even born. On both visible and mechanical levels, you can feel 2011's Bulletstorm in the ancestry of this title. There's a palpable nostalgia for earlier Gears of War titles within the cover and advancing systems, and there's a lush world surrounding you through all of this. Unfortunately, the game's greatest downfall is their lack of freedom within that beautiful world. This is, in large part, due to the overwhelmingly linear hallway to arena level and narrative design. However, everything you can see and touch feels more intricate and clean than many modern games within this genre. This feeling of being inundated with beautiful scenery and design sometimes translates into making you feel like you're being guided through an astonishing art gallery by narrow, roped-off paths that keep you at more than a desirable distance away from some of the more intriguing pieces hung on the wall. It is frustrating at times. One party member that I spent a few hours... <clears throat> one party member that I spent quite a few hours with responded to my discontent of the lack of open world by saying, not all games need to be open world RPGs. And while they're right, I have a flagrant desire for more open world titles. Often, heading in a direction of my choosing can cement my immersion within a game more than many other aspects of modern video games. At the end of the day, Outriders isn't made worse by a linear progression and in many cases, it helps your party move continuously through the game without pause or much discussion regarding objectives. It's a positive. If you take a look back at the previous years of major hype and flopped releases, the relatively under-marketed Outriders comes out looking like a complete miracle in the end. Yes, despite the presence of a fantastically optimized demo, a launch weekend for Outriders wound up being messier than anticipated. However, the company's willingness to be open with their communication and the game's initial stability issues has kept the team at People Can Fly in the good graces of gamers who've been excited for this title for months. Regardless of a shaky kickoff party, People Can Fly have done everything right. They've ticked all the right boxes. Firstly, they released the entire prologue, plus some additional side quests, as a demo a few months prior to launch and players can take their demo progress to the main game. On top of that, it released day and date on Xbox Game Pass services. So, for those of you with the subscription, it's free to download and play. Better still, there's complete crossplay built in, making it as easy as possible for gamers to gather with their friends, regardless of what console or platform they're playing on. It's obvious that the intentions were to make every aspect of this game as smooth as it can be. 
We're now a week into the full release, and the team is still pushing out large patches and insisting that the public know exactly what they're focused on and where they're spending all their time. Mostly, it's with the servers. All in all, this mentality and level of transparency boosts the understanding and sympathy of the consumers, and those that play Outriders for a long time to come will have a more intimate view of this product. Getting back to the beans and toast of the game, and Outriders doesn't stand too far apart from the majority of popular titles in the shooter-slash-whatever genre. There's a base class system, where players can choose from four styles or elements to play with, though the game should really do more to remind players to go back and try the other ones out, because I've never played a game in which some classes click so well with players, while others do not. First on the list of classes is the Technomancer, which is a distance-focused, support and AoE fighter, followed by the Pyromancer, who's mid-ish ranged and uses fire attacks to damage or stun enemies. Next up is the Trickster, who is damage heavy with a squishy core and some movement or control tricks. And the list is rounded out by a tanky Devastator, who uses earth and rock with a majoritively defensive skill set. Which class you choose and enjoy will differ depending on your playstyle and who you are, though I suggest trying them all. Fortunately, once the game is done setting up the story and showing you the ropes, you can start a new character and skip the entire tutorial section, making this progress of experimenting with varied classes a little bit easier. As for core loops, Outriders has a pretty great one if not a little standard. Though it does take some standard loops from a few different types of popular games, and merges them fairly seamlessly into one experience. The grind is strong with this one, Padawans. Outriders is filled with loot drops, loot chests, and choose-your-own-loot rewards for quests. So far, my journey from level 1 to 20-ish, I haven't had a piece of equipment or weapon that lasted me more than 30 minutes or so, as the difficulty rises with your achievements, represented in a tiered world-level system, as do your rewards. Eventually, you unlock the ability to modify your gear, allowing players to prioritize the pieces that they like and giving you plenty of farmable resources to keep those beloved guns and wardrobe parts relevant throughout your journey. I mentioned the world level, and along with that, you've got your player level. So there are two evolving parts to keep track of. World tiers amp up the difficulty and plunder while rewarding you for achieving rank ups while character leveling provides players with the opportunity to edit their character class in a three-tiered stats tree. It's good RPG fun. Each of the four classes have three types of builds, and all with their own unique titles and feels. Though, instead of branching these three limbs off separately, people can fly and have some joining segments of the tree, allowing deeper coordination of the types of stats and increases seen in the different paths. As you progress through Enoch, which is Replacement Earth, you will unlock a total of 10 skills for each class, and they range from movement to protection, damage influence, interruption, and more. Surprisingly, the emphasis built into these abilities is what helps the four classes stand apart from one another. It should be noted that outside of the traditional MMO genre, Outriders has one of the better distinguishing class systems. Though, you could technically play the entire game without using any of your powers and just shoot things along the way. This would be boring, though. The gunplay is differentiated by firearm type and not character class, so it'll all feel the same no matter who you're playing. And it would kind of be missing the point of the game. Speaking of the point, I have waited this long to truly dip into the narrative nature of the story particulars of Outriders because... Well... For a social-focused looter-shooter RPG, story and characters have no right being this good. Installing Outriders, you cycle through a few things in your mind, much like you would with most of this genre's offerings. What class should I play? Are my friends online? What class are they playing? Should I try to mix it up with my gun loadout? Or maybe try something I've never played in games before? Not once did it cross my mind that I would be engrossed in the story of Outriders pretty much from the word jump. It's astonishing, and somewhat maddening, that people can fly have packed a compelling enough story 
that hooks players more than many story-focused titles do. You're an outrider, an elite group of mercenaries and soldiers from Earth. You've been contracted to escort the last of the human race off our dying planet of origin and into the unknown reaches of space in search of a new place to call home. Prior to leaving destroyed Earth, one reading gave hope to humanity, a place called Enoch. Upon reaching this potential new Garden of Eden, you join a scouting team to gather intel from the probes sent to Enoch. These are to ensure livable conditions before unfreezing the rest of the human population and kickstarting the next evolution of our species. Unfortunately, the readings were off, or vague, or fractured, and the storms, dubbed the Anomaly, ruin the scouting mission, killing most of your cohorts. When the Anomaly hits you directly during your attempt to escape, you are altered on a molecular level, giving you powers of great energy and influence. However, you don't know that quite yet. All you're aware of is that after being struck by the storm, one of your search party members places you in a cryogenic pod to heal you, and that's where the story really begins. You, as the player, wake up after an unspecified amount of time, only to realize that more than 30 years have passed since you went into that pod. The Enoch you knew, if only for a brief moment, has been turned into a war zone. Factions of humans from the expedition ship fractured off into groups, all fighting for what they believe is a just cause. There are religious zealots, anarchists, government types, and it's all gone to hell. Some of the characters you meet post-frozen dreams were born on Enoch. Others, the few that survived the early years of the hostile planet, are aged and war-torn, nearly beyond recognition, even your friends. As the train gets rolling, it's up to you and up to two of your friends to fight your way through the monstrous and lethal fauna of Enoch, the groups of power-hungry humans, and so much more. All with the hopes that the once-lost probe sent years before touchdown on Enoch still holds the key to a potentially flourishing life for our species on this planet. It is, in simplest terms, far more compelling than it needs to be, and it's almost intricate enough to be considered fantastic. When it comes time to put a ribbon on the experience that is Outriders, it would be easy to say that it's a must-play. However, that's not a full truth. There's a true line in the sand with a game like this one. It's either for you, or it's not. And which side of that line you stand on doesn't depend on your love of RPGs, or whether you like loot, or if the story is ripe enough for your enjoyment. It's whether you like shooting. If you like games where bullets are words and enemies deserve long and scrumptious monologues, then I think Outriders will scratch at least one of your itches. Unfortunately, there is no way around the main act of interacting with this world, so if shooting guns or hurting digital people and creatures is not your bag, then you should not play this game. There's a grand big picture being painted here, and Outriders may be the kind of game on players' lips for years to come, if people can fly it can muster up enough additional content and gameplay tweaks to keep things fresh. And although it's hard to praise a developer for making things like world design, atmosphere, and story far more interesting than maybe they needed to, it cannot be ignored that having intriguing and compelling reasons to jump back into this world or any game like it, can make or break the long-term success of a franchise. So far, it's hats off to People Can Fly, especially their social media and community managers. Pushing through a less than ideal launch weekend and seeing their half-decade labor of love flourish with the best pieces this genre of gaming has to offer. While Outriders isn't necessarily a game I'm pulled towards playing on my own, it makes for one exhilarating multiplayer experience and gaming has been a crucial part of my inner circle's connection over the last year and change. So thank you. We are absolutely thrilled to be live on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts, and while we wait for approval on Google, 
we would love it if you could head to one of those two platforms and give us a follow or a subscribe. We'll see you next week.